Hello again, I am Blunty, and I've already spoken about my first actual real hands-on gameplay with Pokemon Let's Go, link to that video in the down below area if you missed it. And while I mentioned that I played it with the new Pokeball Plus accessory, I didn't really talk about how that felt at all. So here we are, this is what this video is for. Proper context for this, I'm a big old grown-up. I've loved and played Pokemon since the very first games, and I still love and play Pokemon to this very day. I do a lot of fully lived streamed playthroughs of the games over on twitch.tv slash blubnate. Haha, <laughs> cross promotion. But I am a big old grown-up, with big old grown-up sized hands, which even for a grown-up are fairly big hands. And obviously, despite what the promo vid for the accessory tries to imply, this is a toy intended to entice kids into making their parents spend basically twice the asking price of Pokemon Go alone on launch day. Especially when buying the Pokeball Plus seems to be the only way to actually get a full Pokedex, with the Pokemon Mew being held hostage inside these Pokeball accessories. So it is now not merely an optional gimmick controller, but a 70 Aussie dollar DLC package to get the highly prized legendary Pokemon 151 Mew. It's revolting that Nintendo and Game Freak think this is okay. This is not okay. I mean, did EA recently buy Nintendo, the Pokemon company, and Game Freak and nobody noticed? Because this is some EA level consumer hostile BS right here and it pisses me off. I mean, I'm still going to get my Mew because I've already pre ordered the Pokeball Plus accessory because Nintendo are pretty crap at getting hardware in stock at the time and I'm a YouTuber guy, so it's, you know, people are going to ask me about how I feel about the controller when the game comes out and all that kind of stuff. I'll probably have to do a review, so I need one. <laughs> need. <laughs> Want. Anyway, let's pretend that sometime down the track, let's say just before the launch of the new Pokemon Switch game next year, Nintendo will have some sort of event to give away this previously hostage Pokemon and focus on the hardware itself. <laughs> so yes, back on the topic. Me, grown up, big hands. The Pokeball Plus felt small, but significant. It's about the size of a ping pong ball, I guess, but weighty and pleasant in hand. The plastic has that kind of velvety feel to it. You know, the type I'm talking about, it's lovely. Mechanically, it felt good, solid, secure. The button up top had a good tactility to it, and a smooth but softly clicky action that felt deliberate when pressed. I don't think it's likely you're going to accidentally press this button just while gripping the Pokeball normally. Nintendo have always been pretty good at buttons though, haven't they? The thumbstick though, felt a bit less Nintendo. You give it the old flick and release and you can kind of feel the spring inside it reverberating. And if the show floor at E3 wasn't so noisy, I'd almost expect I would hear a softly muffled sprung. I'm hoping this is just because it is not the final product that I was holding, but a manufacturing test or whatever. It felt decidedly un-Nintendo as far as the thumbstick went. It was a little bit loose, a little bit sloppy, and that, and you could feel the spring vibrating through it. Ah. In fact, they wouldn't even let me take a photo of it, much less some B-roll video of it in my hand, because it was a essentially prototype unit, I guess. But yeah, the, the looseness and vagueness in actual use did bother me a bit. And this is more than just the issue with the possibly prototype thumbstick spring or whatever. See, the issue is this. The controller is a sphere. A sphere-shaped controller made especially for a game with motion-controlled aiming. I want you to think about that for a second. More than once on my attempts to throw a Pokeball at a Pokemon, it would be sent off to the side of the screen rather than the Pokemon I had aimed it at because orientating a spherical controller in your hand and keeping it pointed forward at all times, well, it's not that easy. I mean, the controller is round. It means it can come off axis very, very easily. This isn't an issue with the Joy-Con, of course, or any predecessor motion controller, because they're all little sticks, little wands, clear and easily discernible angle and grip and aim. You know which way's up, you know which way's forward. Easy. With a ball, not so easy. You can orientate it based on where the top button is in relation to the thumbstick and your grip and the red and white hemispheres of the ball, but it's hardly intuitive, and you actually have to look at the controller to get that right. It's a dumb idea for a motion controller. Nah, it's a fun idea for a controller. Absolutely, I love it. It's cute, it's adorable, it's charming. I wish I'd done it years ago, but it's a dumb but fun idea. I'm sure with some more use and practice, it'll become more second nature. But yeah, hardly the best idea Nintendo have ever had for a controller, is it? Around the back of it is a small cutout for a USB 3 Type-C charge port. My ever-bewildered Nintendo helper at the E3 booth had no idea about battery life or charge time, so shrug on that. But again, Nintendo controllers tend to be pretty good about charge times and battery life, don't they? There's also a wrist strap for what should be obvious reasons, of course. 
There's a little translucent thing around where the thumbstick is, and it would blink and throb with differently colored lights depending on the activity in game. Mainly this was during the capture process, and if the game decided the catch was successful or not. There's also some vibration, which felt a bit more aggressive than the standard Joy-Con feedback. I don't know if this is the same fidelity of the HD vibration that the Joy-Con do, but it felt fine. And it does something the Joy-Con can't do as well. It makes noise. The Pokeball Plus has a speaker built into it, and out from it comes the vocal cries of the Pokemon you just caught. A cute feature, if of no practical use. Until, of course, you get to the bonus feature. The Pokeball Plus can function as a mobile digital pet thing. You put a Pokemon in there from your game and you walk around with it, doing stuff. Rocking it, patting it, putting it on the desk or something. Kind of like the Poker Walker from back in the days of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, except without a screen. And I expect you'd be rewarded for doing this with some sort of in game bonuses and things like that. Of course, I didn't get to test any of this or indeed its ability to act as a Pokemon Go accessory for your phone, in the same vein as the Pokemon Go Plus wristband thingy. But it can do all of that. In the end, I did like the Pokeball Plus controller, and I'm keeping my pre-order. Not just because I get Mew, but because it's a cute little gimmick. And it is absolutely a gimmick. You don't need it, doesn't make the gameplay better, does nothing of particular value, and sure, it's actually slightly worse at being a controller than the Joy-Con itself when it comes to the motion control stuff, but it is a fun gimmick, and sometimes a fun gimmick is enough. Just one more little droplet of fun in your day. In my opinion, it's a worthwhile thing if you spend your days collecting as many of these little droplets of fun as possible. Certainly beats the alternative, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'm Lottie, and I'll catch you next time.